Hey guys, well yesterday we talked about inequalities and what does it mean and today we're going to talk about writing and graphing them. So this is coming out of lesson 8-6, writing and graphing inequalities. Now for sure, um, this is going to be two pages and I could kick myself because I made copies of the foldable you're putting into your notes. Let's see, tomorrow is this, or today's the seventh. And I left them all at school, and I can't figure out where my master came from, so I'm going to have to reproduce it by hand. So I'm going to do it on its own page, um, and then do the best I can with it. So uh, it's not going to be as cute as yours, but you'll get the idea of where things go. So first off, to demonstrate, let's get a different color. To demonstrate an answer, to demonstrate an answer uh, to an inequality, and remember how I talked about yesterday that um, all inequalities have an infinite number of answers, at least the kind of inequalities we are doing, a simple inequality. Um, so, just writing it does not get the impact that graphing it will. So, to demonstrate an answer to an inequality, you must graph it on a number line. So, that's what we're going to focus on today. Graphing on a number line. And then... Um, and here's what you need to make sure that you understand. So I'm going to change color so it stands out. Uh, you, let's see, the inequality must be in the form, and change color one more time, variable inequality symbol and the number which is called a constant okay <clears throat> and this is why I always was talking to you last chapter about how when you solve a an equation, the variable is always going to be on the left. So all the directions I'm going to share with you assume the variable came first when you wrote the final inequality. So let's remind you about inequality symbols. Oh, you know what? Let's do something else first. Ooh. Let's give you an example underneath here. So we would have something like x is greater than 5. Okay? <clears throat> so an inequality symbol we have 4 that could possibly be correct. Uh, and the inequality symbol will determine two things. First, is the constant a solution or not a solution? And the second thing that it's going to tell us is the graph going to the right or to the left of the constant. Okay, so that's what the inequality symbol gives us a lot of information. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is I'm going to go to the next screen and I'm going to try my hardest to reproduce that 
uh, foldable. This would be the point where you would be gluing it in. If you feel like you can't fit it into this page, make it its own. Okay, in the few seconds that it took you to glue your purple, I think it's purple sheet down. I can't remember what color it is now. I think it's purple. Um, it's taken me a few minutes to write this in. So this is basically what that purple sheet says. Um, a slight difference on the bottom where I couldn't fit the number line underneath the word, so I just put it to the right of it. <clears throat> Sorry, you can hear my jacket. Um, so we're going to go through this uh, and end up at the bottom with the graphing part. No, I, yeah, I think we'll do that, the graphing part, and then we'll come back and we'll do the kind of word problem stuff. So let's start with a blank is a mathematical sentence that compares expressions. Now you might say, that sounds like an equation, okay? However, that can also be an inequality because we are comparing two things. However, we can compare the variable to lot. Uh, the variable can be lots of things to make the inequality true. All right, down below that, it says graphing inequalities. Inequalities can be shown using a da -dun -da 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 graph. Now, here comes the really important piece. Okay, <clears throat> number not included. So let's say that we aren't going to actually have the number that we see in our inequality is a solution. So what we do is something called an open circle. So at that number, the constant, we have a circle that's open. Now I'll be demonstrating this in just a minute so you can see what it looks like. And then number included would be called a closed circle. So that says when it's closed up and filled in, that means that number is one of the solutions. So let's go on the bottom here, practice that notion. So let's start with red. It says x is greater than 14. Actually, you know what we're going to do? We're going to go ahead and put numbers in. Now, <clears throat> you know how I said I like to do graphs before? This whole putting zero in the middle and then x amount on the right, x amount on the left, I think that's a waste of time. What I like to do is go to the center of my graph and I'm going to put the number that is in my graph. So I'm going to show 14, and then I'm going to show one in front of it, and I'm going to show one behind it. And I really don't need to fill in the rest of the tick marks. This is sufficient enough for us. <clears throat> so if you notice, we have a greater than, greater than. Now, greater than tells me a couple different things. It tells me the direction I'm going to move is going to be to the right, and the greater than does not include the number. So at 14, I have an open circle, and I color very obviously to the right. Now, I can go all the way to the end point. If I don't, I just need to make an arrow cap. If I do get to the end of the, of the graph, I still am going to make a really thick arrow cap. Don't leave anything up to me trying to decide, did they include that or not include that? Okay, so how does the graph change when we make it greater than or equal to? <clears throat> well, we're still gonna go to the right because that's where the greater numbers are, but it says or equal to. So at the 14, I'm gonna do one of those closed circles and then I'm gonna color to the right. So one thing that I've discovered is if I have a greater than or a greater than or equal to, I'm going to color to the right. Okay, let's look at less than. <coughs> so it says x is less than 14. So it does not include 14 as the answer, so that's an open circle. And the numbers that are less, less are to the left. Don't forget that arrow cap. Okay. And if I try less than or equal to 14, 
That means 14 is one of the solutions, so I'm going to darken it in and then color to the left for less than. Okay. Now, what we should have concluded from this guy is that less than or less than or equal to says we're going to color to the left. Which makes sense. Left is less. The numbers are getting less. Right, the numbers are getting more or greater. Okay. Now sometimes they're going to give us a word situation and we're going to have to translate it into an actual inequality. So we're going to do that now. <coughs> start with this color. So it says x is less than. So remember we talked about once we pair an is less than, just like before is greater than, is greater than or equal to, is less than, is less than or equal to. In fact, I'm going to go back and color in some of those. So is greater than 14 is greater than or equal to 14 is less than 14 and is less than or equal to 14. All right, <clears throat> so we've got x is less than negative 5. So we have x is less than negative 5. So if I was graphing this, I would find negative 5 on the x axis or on the number line and I would go to the left for less than. So I'll show you a quick little drawing of what I would do. There's my three tick marks. Negative 5 in the center, negative 4 is larger, negative 6 is smaller. And then we're going to go ahead and graph. So less than is not a solution of the negative 5 and color to the left for less than. All right, let's talk about Miguel. <coughs> So it says Miguel has at least $20. All right, so that has at least. So at least means it could be more. It could be more. So the smallest number is 20, but it could be more. So when I write that, I write M is greater than or equal to 20. Now off to the side here, I'm going to say what M stands for. M stands for Miguel, or Miguel's money. Okay. Next statement. The puppy weighs no more than. Okay. No more than means this number, or it could be something less. Okay. So when we write this, we'll say, oh, you know what? I forgot to graph. Let's go back and let's graph Miguel. So I'm going to have the three numbers, 20s in the middle, 19 in front, 21 after. Since it's or equal to, it's going to be a closed circle, and greater than or equal to says you color to the right. All right. There we go. Brain not working. So puppy weighs no more than. So it means it could be that weight, but it could be less. So that's a less than or equal to symbol. So let's define that P is puppy's weight. Always need to define our variables. And then when I graph it, then three tick marks, four in the middle, three in front, five in the back. Now, or equal to is also a closed circle, and then we color to the left for less than. <coughs> and the last one, we're going to have Anna is more than. Is more than means greater than, okay? So we're going to say A is greater than 15. So A stands for Anna's age. I'm going to draw another line. So we're going to put 15 in the middle, 
14 before it, 16 after it. And we're going to say that Anna is greater than 15. So she's not 15, but she's older than that. So open at 15, and we color to the right for greater than. Okay, so that's pretty much the same graph that we had. Um, now, the only thing I don't like, I think I'm going to come back here. I know you get all mad at me when I do that, but sometimes I just need to. We're going to come here, and when it's pointing to the left, we color to the left. Okay? So that only works if the inequality has the variable come first. All right, we're going to go on the next page, and we're going to do a couple of examples. So the directions are... Write an inequality for each sentence. Okay. Write an inequality for each sentence. So we're going to do a couple of them. Uh, you must be over... 12 years old to ride the go-karts. Okay? <clears throat> so we're going to start with words, and then we're going to get to the variable, and then we're going to write the inequality. Okay, so let's think about the, if we just kind of button down to basics in words, your age is over 12. So in a nutshell, I just kind of took all those words and consolidated them down. So then that leads to what's the unknown in this problem, what's our x, and the x is your age. We don't know how to write that. I know what over means, it's greater than. I know what 12 means, 12. So now we're ready to write the inequality. So x is over is greater than 12. And that's your final answer. Now, I know what I, I can already hear you. Do we have to do all those other steps? Well, first and foremost, you do have to tell me what the variable represents, and then you do have to write the inequality. Okay, all right, let's try another one. A pony is less than 14.2 hands tall. Now, whether you knew it or not, how they measure horses is not with a ruler stick, but by the width of a hand. All right, so let's see what we got. A pony is less than 14, let's see, hands tall. So we're going to take each one of those. I'm going to define my unknown. So in this case, the x is the pony's height. Oops, what am I writing? There we go. Now we're going to translate the inequality. And we're going to say a pony's height is less than 14.2 hands tall. And what I don't need to do, <coughs> excuse me, is I don't need to um, write any labels on this because it's the inequality. All right, last of this kind. Uh, you 
must be at least 16 years old. to have a driver's license. Oops. Okay. So, let's think about the beginning. You and then with inequality must be at least, there's your inequality, and it's really at least, I can narrow it down to that, and then 16 years old. The whole driver's license thing is not necessary, um, but let's go ahead and see what we get. U is going to be our X, so we're going to say X is... your age and then the inequality would be your age must be at least that means it could be more so that's greater than or equal to 16 okay the last thing we're going to do is graph inequalities Now, because my screen is shorter than what your paper is, what I'm going to do is I might do two examples here on the left, and then I'll do a third one over on the right. <clears throat> so they're going to give me two things, an inequality and a number line. And if they don't give me a number line, I can make one pretty easily. So what I'm going to do is analyze the key ingredient, which is the inequality symbol. So from that, I can get two things. Uh, 12 is not a solution, so it's an open circle, and it's pointing to the right. So I'm going to go back, and I'm going to number 12 in the middle, 11 in front, 13 behind. And then we're going to go at open circle at 12, and we're going to color to the right for or it could be more. Okay. Let's do a second one here. And we'll have x is less than 14.2. So this one's interesting. When I'm graphing this, I'm actually going to have more numbers on. So i got to figure out where 14.2 falls between. So I take the whole number part, that's going to be my left whole number. I'm going to add one to it to go one to the right. So my number is somewhere between 14 and 15. The decimal portion says 2, so that means I'm actually a little bit closer to the um, 14 than I am the 15. All right, so the symbol, if I can make it nicely, is it greater than or equal to? That means it's closed, so that we're going to say, yes, that is a solution. And then it's still going to be pointing to the right. Okay, so let's draw that graph. Oops. Sorry, dragged my pen. Now this one, I'm going to put in four numbers. So the 14 and 15 are here in the center. 13 in front, 16 in the back. And we're going to go ahead and go to 14.2, 4, which we're going to estimate would be about here. And then I'm going to label it 14.2. It's going to be a closed circle at 14.2. And it says color to the right because it's great. And the last example, oops, sorry, not five, six. It says x is greater than or equal to 16. Look at all of those. Oh, wait a second, I did something wrong, didn't I? 
Uh, all right, I got to do some erasing. Sorry, I'm tired. <clears throat> Let's try this again, shall we? So the inequality for number five says less than, and if you notice, it's pointing to the left. So I don't know. I copied it down wrong. That would be my problem. I had the complete wrong thing. Fantastic. I'm sure some of you are screaming, Rosner, stop. So it's closed and includes that number as a solution. And then we're going to color to the left for less than. All right, we're back on track. So we're coloring left. And so notice that the arrow cap looks like the inequality less than. Isn't that cool? All right, now we're ready for the last one, number six. <coughs> so we have x is greater than or equal to 16. So I can go back to just three numbers. 16 in the middle, 15 in front of that, 17 after that. <clears throat> so we're going to analyze that inequality symbol. So greater than or equal to means it's closed, that that number is an answer to the inequality. It is one of the solutions. And then the greater than is pointing to the right. So we're going to go to 16, we're going to draw a closed circle, all filled in, and then we're going to color to the right. Don't forget the arrow cap. And there you have it. Have fun with this, guys. See you tomorrow. Or actually, yeah, see you tomorrow.